This is Alex Okafor, lifetime Longhorn and Super Bowl champion with the Kansas City Chiefs. And today on Behind the Face Mask, we got Texas defensive tackle Byron Murphy. Appreciate you coming through, family. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. So you're from DeSoto, Texas. Yes, sir. Um, what did life look like for you growing up? Like, do you have any siblings? Um, were you close to both of your parents? Like, what did that family dynamic look like? Well, uh, you know, I come from a two-parent household, raised by great parents. Uh, got three three siblings, two older brothers, one younger. And, uh, you know, growing up, you know, it was, you know, pretty rough, you know, tough times. But I got everything I wanted as a kid. Mm-hmm. You know, my parents made sure I had, you know, food food in my mouth, clothes in my back, and a roof over my head. So, mm-hmm. and they did a, gr- a good job, a great job taking care of me and my brothers. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I give it all to them. They, they the reason I'm here right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you blessed, brother. Yeah. Um, what is, so how old are your siblings? You got two older brothers and a little sister. How old are they? Uh, no, I got two older brothers and one little brother. And one little brother. Yeah, okay, I got, got you. Seven, yeah. So it's four of y'all. Yeah, it's four of Ooh, us. I know yeah. you was giving, I know y'all was giving man. your mom the hell. Man. <laughs> All boys, man. Yeah. Uh, so, so how old are they? How old are the oldest? Uh, the oldest one is 28, I believe. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the second oldest, he's, I believe he's 26. And the okay. other one is 17. Okay. Um, I'm assuming y'all are pretty close. Yeah. Y'all still talk every single day. Oh, yeah, that? yeah, man. We, we close, man. Uh, Mm-hmm. You know, we we all you know grew up in the same house. You know, mm-hmm. they're my brothers. Uh, you know, I, I love them, man. I, I love them dearly. You know, we talk every day. Matter of fact, I was just with them this past weekend mm-hmm. at my mom's uh, dinner party. So you know, I, you know, I keep them guys with me at all times. You know, they very close to my heart. You know, they they in this journey with me too. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna need them for sure. And are all of them like? Are they all big like you? All of them six plus, three hundred nah, plus? See, look, <laughs> my, my, my two older brothers, yeah. they little, bro. Like okay. my one of them, he he like five nine, five ten, but mm-hmm. he he like a up, I say about a buck fifty, buck ten. He's small, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my yeah. other my second oldest brother, yeah. he like five five. Okay. But my little brother, uh-huh. I think he he getting the size now. Okay. Yeah, he kinda big. I think he's gonna be bigger than me, actually. Okay. Dope, man. It's a... Uh, it's crazy how genetics work, man. Yeah, like, it's it the same is. with my little brother. Like he's not super small, but like he's about like five eleven, six foot, but he's skinny. That's what it is. So yeah. he's like a buck sixty, something <laughs> like that. And I'm six five, two fifty. Right. So it's, <laughs> genetics are crazy, man. So you went to DeSoto High School, yep. and for people that don't know, DeSoto High School pumps out NFL talent oh, yeah. like no other. You got guys like Von Miller, AJ Green, Jalen Mills, Marcus Tubbs, Tatum Bell. In your opinion, who's the best player to ever come out of DeSoto? Oh, it might be. All right, yeah. no, I'm, I'm going to say me. I don't. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm going to go with me. That's real. I'm going to go with me. But, yeah. uh, nah, man, but DeSoto, you know, done produced a lot of players, you know, a lot of talent that came through there, you know, and I'm just blessed to be just to be part of that, just to say I went to DeSoto, you know, because them guys before me, you know, they set, they set the foundation. So mm-hmm. if it weren't for them, you know, DeSoto probably wouldn't be where, probably wouldn't be where DeSoto is now. So mm-hmm. they started it, and now it's just steady going, pipeline. So mm-hmm. um, I, I, think, I don't think DeSoto ever changed. Mm-hmm. And um, do guys come back and kind of give game to the to the young bucks, or is it just like once you're gone, like the next class steps in and just an ever-going oh, no, like, guys, cycle? Guys come back all the time, like – uh Especially Vaughn, you know, Vaughn do a lot for, not even just for the school, but for the community. Mm-hmm. Like he he loved the Soto, so he, he do a lot. You know, guys, yeah, guys come back all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's family, you know. Once you're an eagle, you're always an eagle. Mm-hmm. So you're about 6'1", 305. T-Sweat's about 6'5", 360. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all got completely different measurables. Yeah. How do y'all complement each other on the field? Oh, uh, man, we, you know, we play, we play off each other, you know. Mm-hmm. I tell him like, hey, let's go. Like he tell me the same thing, vice versa. So we feed out, we feed off each other. You know, we got great chemistry. Mm-hmm. So we we pretty much like we we seeing stuff before the play even start. So we reading the same things. Like we come we coming to the sideline, tell each other, hey man, you see this? You see this guard do this and that? He like, yeah, we own it. Or like, or we mess up on anything. Like we correct each other right away. And it's like, okay, no, you know, no bickering or nothing. So I feel like. You know, that's that's what you need as a teammate. You need them type of guys, you know, to uh, help push you, you know, learn from one another. And, you know, I feel like T. Sweat was a great, he was a great teammate. I, I had fun playing with him. I enjoyed it. and surely going to miss it. Yeah. And on a 
on a previous episode of this podcast, T Sweat said that he had to change a lot over the offseason. Yeah. Like he had to become a better leader. And he feels like that leadership shift or that leadership change is one of the reasons why y'all had so much success this year. Could you kind of like speak on what you saw from Sweat? Oh, in yeah, terms fact, of man, uh, Sweat, man, uh, he he stepped up this year. You know, he took a he took up he took a big role. And uh, I feel like he was a great leader, you know, on and off the field, you know, just being positive all the time, you know, uh, encouraging guys to get better, you know, guys on scout, the freshmen, just giving game to the young guys, you know, even to me, you know. Yeah. So, uh, and, you know, him being a senior, I feel like, you know, that's what this team needed. And, you know, guys like that on the team must lead, you know, and everybody going to follow. So that's what he did. And, I, you know, I, I applaud him for that, for sure. Y'all had one of the best run defenses in the country, if not the best run defense. Yeah. Anybody that's played D-line knows that run defense is a mentality. Oh, yeah. So man. what's what's the mentality every time y'all step on the field? Man, I'm, our mentality is, is kill, man. You, like, we're, we're going to stop the run. Like, there's nothing there's nothing holding us back. Like, there's nothing you can tell us. Like, and then if you think you're going to run the ball, you, like, you got to show us. Like, that was our – that was our mindset. And they were Coach Bo installed in us. Like we, were, like, we were just all about being more dominant, like one of your box. Like, mano, mano, like, man on oh man, like, who's a better man? It's going to be us every time. Mm -hmm. no, I feel just that. refusing to lose. Absolutely. So let's, let's kind of look at training camp a little bit because yeah. offensively, we got one of the best running back rooms in the country. You oh, know yeah. what we got back there. Oh, yeah. Defensively, D line wise, one of the best D lines in the country. Right. Something got to give at practice. We got one of the best rushing attacks, but on the opposite side, we got one of the best run defenses. What something had to give during practice? What did that oh, look like? Man, you, man. <laughs> we go at it from spring, from spring ball to fall camp during the season. Man, we was going at it every day, uh, just trying to get each other better, you know. But that, that's really all it was like that's what, that's what it's all about. But you know, but like yeah, man, we was, we were just competing. Going hard every day, you know, we get into it with each other, you know, because this, you know, them, my brothers, you know, even though they on different sides of the ball. But yeah, man, it was a, it was a tough challenge, you know. Yeah. It was real tough, and we enjoyed it a lot. You know, they made they plays, we made ours in practice. So I, you know, and then also I got better off them guys as well, how, you know, how good they ran the ball, you know, and, and vice versa. They, they got same, same treatment. So, you know, it was, it was cool though. It was great. Having JB back there, see for all them talented guys, man. So I appreciate playing with all them guys as well, too. You can see it when you watch y'all play just because I think the depth of this team just speaks volumes. And realistically, that's how teams get better by yes. having good depth because during camp, during the season, like yeah. you're not always going one on ones, like ones versus ones. Once the season started, now it's the first team versus the second team, right. and that first team still has to get that look. They still got to get those good reps. Mm -hmm. So I think the depth from this team is really starting to show itself, oh, and yeah. I think that's why y'all are able to feed off each other oh, and yeah. get better. I play – Coach Bo's been around for a while. Yeah. I played for Coach Bo back in, I want to say, 2011 and 2012. Really? Yeah. yeah. There's a ton of dudes across the league that have played for Coach Bo. Coach Bo's name rings out here. Yeah. In your opinion, how did he contribute to your success? Man, uh, he contributed a lot, you know, coming in my freshman year. Uh, he seen, he knew I had the potential to play, you know, he knew I had the talent and, and like everything. Uh, so he was hard on me every day, you know, from my, from my freshman year all the way up to my, uh, my junior, all three years. He just pushed me to be the best player I can be. And also, he also pushed me to be a better man, you know. He just, he, he just didn't talk about ball all the time. He, he talked about life, you know, that, I feel like that's what I needed from a coach. And, uh, you know, I look at him, I look at Coach Bo like, a, like another father figure because he helped me out a lot. He did a lot. He did a lot of things for me. And I appreciate him for like for real, for real, from the bottom of my heart. And, uh, yeah, that's why like, he more than a coach to me, man. Uh, he taught me a lot of life lessons, just a lot of things, a lot of things about the game. Like he changed my whole perspective on football and everything. So I appreciate that, man, for real. So, yeah. yeah, and it's been cool to see your development. Like, obviously, all the OGs we follow, y'all young bucks, and especially me being a former D lineman, yeah. I'm gonna be looking at y'all closely. So I remember you coming in as a freshman and making an immediate impact. But I know before you got to school, when Texas was iffy a little bit from yeah. that like whatever 2010 range to 2020, mm -hmm. people were saying the players weren't developing, like the coaches weren't getting the players developed. 
I think it's cool to see a guy like you come in, make an immediate impact, but your development didn't stop at your freshman year. Like you got better and better every single season. Right. And now you sitting here, damn near staring at the first round, man. It's OGs are proud and it's, it's been fun to watch, man. Yeah, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So in your opinion, what's Coach Bo's best quality as a coach? Best quality? Mm -hmm. I say uh, keeping it real at all times. That's what I say. You know, he'll never tell you, never tell you a lie or never tell you something just to make you feel good. Like he gonna tell you like what it is and what it ain't. I feel like everybody should want that, especially if you're trying to get better. You should be able to take that type of, you know, criticism or or whatever he's trying to tell you, whatever feedback he's trying to tell you. So I say just being real all the time. And uh, also, he, he give it his all, like, 100% every day. Like, it's never on an off day with Coach Bo. Like, it's Coach Bo. Like, it's Coach Bo every day. That same man walking through them doors every day with the same attitude and the same energy. And he, he going to make sure you do the same. Mm -hmm. For sure. So for the people watching, they might not know how funny Coach Bo is. Oh, like yeah. this man is hilarious. <laughs> Probably one of the funniest coaches I've ever had. Man. <laughs> Do you have any funny Coach Bo sayings? Man, I, <laughs> man, I got a lot, man. Uh, <laughs> What's one of your favorites? One of my favorites? I I'm, I'm too much don't have a favorite, but I got so many moments of that dude, man, just – Man, say it, dog. <laughs> Kobo, 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 man. I don't have a lot of Kobo moments, but, uh, but yeah, man, like just him, like just getting angry or something, or just saying, like, just saying any, any, any of everything, man. But that, yeah, that dude, that dude wild, though. No, Kobo, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's that's crazy, a, that's a crazy, crazy man. Though. He country, and then yeah. once, he, <laughs> once he starts getting mad, oh, though, man, it's, that's it's why over he, with. When, yeah, yeah, he losing. When, when, mm -hmm. he, when he losing, ain't no bringing him back. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't have a lot of Coach Bo moments, man. A lot of funny moments from mean rooms to on the field, to off the field, dinner, whatever, wherever we at. Mm -hmm. And he, and he don't care. He don't care like who around at all. So he gonna be him regardless. Yeah, no, I heard that, and I'm not gonna pry too deep because I know we'll probably have to cut it out yeah. if you tell the coach both story. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll keep it moving. Okay, so let's take it back to the Iowa State game. One of the offensive linemen was talking out the side of his neck. Oh uh, yeah, and this is what he said, and I quote. We're going to send him to the SEC with the loss. Mm. There are a bunch of five stars that think their shit don't stink. They're just humans with a high ego that needs to be checked. What was going through your mind when you heard these comments? What was going through my mind when I heard those comments? I just said, okay, bit. Mm -hmm. That was my mind. That was my, uh, that's where my head was at. So I was like, okay, bit. So I'm, since you talking, I'm going to shut you up. I'm not, I'm not going to. Go on, go on the media and do all that back and forth. I'm, I'm gonna show you in my play, in my style of play, the way I play. So I'm gonna come out the ball every play, and I'm gonna let you know how, how I feel. I'm gonna play with my pads, and you can do the talking, and that's what happened. Mm -hmm. How hard was it for you not to respond midweek? Like, oh, uh, 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 it, it was real hard. I, <laughs> I, when I seen, that, I was angry because like, yeah. it's like you disrespecting us, and then you not giving us. I, I respect, you know, because we, we respect every opponent. Mm -hmm. We don't fear, but we respect for sure. And like, because when we talk to the media, we always say, you know, them a group, a, a good group of guys, you know, a great team and everything. But like, just to come on the media and like disrespect us, that was wrong. So, but yeah, I was pissed off for sure. Yeah, I ain't never. If I'm being honest, I've never seen anything like that, especially coming from a player of his caliber. Like, it'd be different if we're looking at the number one guard on the board exactly. right now, talking crazy, well, yeah. okay, we got a matchup. Yeah. We're looking at a, like a dude <laughs> that knows he's about to get his ass handed right. to him. So why you doing all that? Why you doing all that talking? <laughs> and what's, what's even more interesting about that is because, like you said, obviously y'all are trained to let your pads do the talking. You're not right. going to give the other team no billboard material. The fact that Iowa State is just letting them get in front of the camera, just talking crazy, it kind of makes me think that that's what their head coach kind of tells them, and he kind of sets the tone for them. Oh, yeah, so, I, think so too. I don't know. Well, Y'all handle business. <laughs> oh, <so. yeah. laughs> so you've declared for the 2024 NFL draft. Yeah. What went, what all went into that process for you? Uh, man, to me, me personally, uh, I say it, you know it was a no brainer for me, man. Uh, Especially, you know, the, the season I had this year, you know, the, the impact I had just on uh, the Big 12, you know, college football, 
Uh, just going out there playing week in, week out, and then even, you know, the awards that came with it. So it was kind of a no-brainer for me, man. And that was my goal. It always been my goal, you know, be three and out. You know, I, t I told myself that my freshman year, came there with that chip on my shoulder, and, and I did that. I proved everybody wrong, proved my daughters wrong, and I did that. At what point in the season did you kind of have the idea that, like, your time was coming to an end at Texas? Like, did you just make that decision right after the Washington game, or was there a point in the season where you're like, man, like, these next few games might be my last few snaps at Texas? Like, where did, where did that man, come into play for you? I knew my time was coming to an end when we started getting uh, – we made it to we made it to the Big Twelve Championship game. That's why I knew it was getting close then. Then it all started winding down, but it, it was going fast at the same time. So that's when I knew it was coming to an end. So when it, when I knew it was coming to an end, every you know every little moment I had left, you know, I just cherished all the moments, man. Just being in DKR, practicing in there, you know, even the games, man, the fans, the atmosphere, you know, I don't think that I never see another type of fan base or ever like that type of atmosphere ever again man that was that was just amazing mm -hmm. for real. and with you and t sweat leaving that's a lot of production leaving yeah. that d-line yeah. um who are you excited to watch next year on the d-line uh man i'm excited to watch my boy uh, Alfred collins okay yep. um big nine five yeah yeah jare blesso yep i'm ready to see him man. that's a freak athlete uh and uh my young boy uh Sider mitchell Mm -hmm. I'm ready to see him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just laughing because, <laughs> bro, they making y'all different nowadays. For anybody that hasn't seen Sadir, like oh, he's man. he's as big as T Sweat, but Massive. T Sweat wasn't as big as him back in the exactly. day. So like, I'm if T Sweat could get up to 360, I don't even want to know what the, how big this dude is gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> but now you hit it right on the head. I'm I'm excited to see those three yeah. dudes like produce. Is there anybody in the league that you enjoy watching or you try to model your game after? Uh, of course, Aaron Donald for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, guys like Ed Oliver, mm -hmm. uh, Kenny Clark. Mm -hmm. You know, I watch all of them guys, man. Uh, I just like, you know, they style of play, uh, how aggressive they play, you know, their motor, especially ADs, man, his motor don't stop. Mm -hmm. No matter, no matter how many people blocking him, two or three people, he, like, he's coming. And then, you know, that's how, uh, that's how I feel like. I feel like I'm like him, you know, in, in many ways. And uh, as far as Ed, too, you know, same thing with him. Uh, I like the way he played pass rush is, is uh, phenomenal. Uh, just all them guys are great players, man. I look at a lot of D linemen in the league, though, for sure. I try to monitor my game after them and, and pick up pick up stuff they done and try to put it in my game. So, yeah, man, I love it. Yeah. No, I'm glad you said Aaron Donald because watching you play at Texas, that's who I immediately think of, too. And – Obviously, we got to taper like our comparisons because, yeah. in my opinion, AD is the best to ever play at the position, nice. and that's saying something. But I see a lot of similarities in y'all's yeah. game, and I just see the league shifting to smaller players defensively with right. a pass happy league. You need quick, explosive guys that can rush the passer, right. and also in the new day and age, I feel like you don't have to be 340 to stop the run. Right, like right, right. smaller guys now, they're learning that you can win with leverage. Oh, yeah. Like you can take on doubles with leverage. And we right. saw that all throughout your tape. So I'm glad you said that. Sure. Uh, I asked Jonathan Brooks the same question. Yeah. Are there any teams that you don't want to draft you? Don't want to draft me? I say the Colts. <laughs> <laughs> why the Colts, man? Why, man? why the Colts? It's too cold, dog. <laughs> Too That's cold. what JB said. JB's like, look, I'll play for anybody, yeah. but if I had to pick, I prefer to go to a warm weather, like yeah, a warm man. weather city. Yeah, facts, facts. Got to go somewhere warm. You know, I'm, I'm a Texas boy, man. I don't like, I don't like that cold at all. So, nah, <laughs> man. I don't miss with that cold. Nah. I can barely handle the cold out here right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so whenever you go to the combine and you in Indianapolis <laughs> and you meet with the Colts and they ask you, "Are you excited to come play for us?" What are you gonna say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say yeah, cause you know, I'm, you know. I'm gonna have to, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna have to say, yeah, man. I, I can't tell them no. I can't tell them no. I ain't gonna be able to tell them that. <laughs> no, I respect that. All right. So one of my favorite things about you as a player is when I watch you play, you just play the game violent yeah. and nasty, like straight bully ball mentality. Like you got the mentality that Texas fans have been begging for over the past decade. Right. In your opinion, what's your best strength on the field? My best strength. Uh, 
far as like what's what's your best quality like as a player what do you do best uh I say, you know, I, I think I do everything. I think I'm an all three down type, you know, D lineman. You know, I can stop the run whenever. I can pass rush. You know, I, 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 I can do it all, man. I don't think I'm missing, like, missing anything. Of course, you know, is, you know, I got to better, continue to better my technique and my craft and everything, of course. But other than that, man, I think I got, I think I'm an all three down D lineman. I got everything. Man. I can do whatever. Whatever they need me to do, I can do it. It's going to get done. What's on your pregame playlist? Like I said, you play the game nasty. Like yeah. you play the game angry. Yeah. What gets you to that place? Oh, man. NBA young boy. Young boy. Yep. Got to uh, be young boy. <laughs> uh, a, lo a local, uh, it's a local Dallas rapper out here named, uh, run, named Rundown 4. Okay. Uh, yep. Plenty guys, uh, just pl plenty guys from back home, from the city. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, again, young boy. And yeah, you know, I just keep them guys going all day. Just, just stuff that just get me in that zone. Like, mm -hmm. Just had me, made me want to, yeah, <laughs> get, out, get out somebody, man. So yeah, yeah. I try to listen, to listen to things like that, listen to guys like that for sure. And is it, is it nonstop like hip hop or is there like, do you ramp up? Is it like gospel, R&B and then you like ramp up to that hip hop or is it just nonstop? Oh, it's nonstop. Yep. Yeah. Like soon as I, like soon as I wake up in the morning from the hotel onto the bus, on through the Bebo walk, onto the stadium, like I'm. I'm bumping it, like I'm getting in that mode, I'm getting ready for whoever, whoever in front of the line up in front of me, like you finna get this all four quarters. And I'll tell you what, from the people watching you play, hey, <laughs> we feel for the man that's gonna be in front of you. <laughs> no doubt. Well, that was episode six of Behind the Face Mask. I appreciate my boy Byron Murphy coming yes, through. Thanks for having me. Yes, man. sir.